Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and today it's all about Nolansville. We have very special guest, head football coach Paul Derrick, head volleyball coach Brett Young. Thank you guys for being here. Well, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. So I believe this might be a first in WCTV Coaches Show history that we've had two coaches from the same school that aren't the same sport, and it's because... Tonight's WCTV Game of the Week is football hosting Rockvale. So we thought we'd do a, something a little bit different uh, and talk about uh, not only football, but also a little volleyball with Coach Young. So I appreciate you guys being the guinea pigs, so to speak, on this. So let's hope this goes well. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys, athletically, it's gone pretty well at Nolensville. Uh, just athletics in general, if you talk about that, Coach Derrick, you look at football, the success you've had, obviously volleyball winning three state championships, but girls basketball, people forget the old pandemic year. Really, their semi was probably going to be the state final. Whoever right. won that game was going to probably win it. Uh, had some success in soccer, in baseball. You've got a young lady named Claire Stigall right now that's yeah. doing okay. But yeah. just talk about, Coach, athletics in general in only seven years. This is year seven. Yeah, I think that, number one, I think we have great support, um, not only from administration and uh, our school, but also the community. I mean, Nolensville is a pretty unique uh, place in Williamson County where it's still got that small-town feel to it, I think. Um, so from that standpoint, I think that's contributed to it. And then also, I think, and I think Brett would agree, all of our coaches really support each other. Yeah. We work with each other. Uh, everybody gets along. So I think that that piece of it as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been pretty phenomenal what we've been able to do in, in the short amount of time. Coach Young, I mean, I was, I've was i been talking about this the past couple of weeks. Think about this. So there's Brentwood. Ravenwood's born out of, Ra out of Brentwood. No one's feels born out of Ravenwood. You talk about both of your sports. If that was, if we were Texas and that was a school, that would be a pretty darn impressive school. Uh, I, I don't even. It, it's, it's hard to even think about, you know, uh, just with the the type of kids we have now and the athletes we have, and you know, to piggyback off uh, what Coach Derek said, just incredible support. Uh, you know, staying on the sidelines, uh, you know, at a Friday night football game and not a seat to be had, and you know, just people all over the place and. We've been so fortunate uh, to have the support we've had. Yeah. You know, you just don't see it a lot in volleyball, but we're having 80 and 100 kids deep in our student section, you know, for a volleyball match. And uh, it's just, you don't ever want to take that for granted because uh, not every school has that type of support. And I know that, uh, you know, both of us as well as just all our coaches in general, you know, just super excited to how well supported we are within our community. And Coach Derek, something I noticed – uh, when I when I was at the Franklin Nolensville volleyball match, some of those he's talking about, they're your guys. Yeah, which shows yeah. that there's a relationship with the coaches. Absolutely, that's one thing I didn't mention is the the the, the sports teams players they support each other as well. I mean, uh, I remember when he won his first uh, state title, we went out there and uh, and I let I gave the kids off that Thursday. We went out there and watched the the uh, uh, the game, and then. I actually did a radio show that night at Stroud's and had some of my players come with me. So we were actually there watching on their phone and keeping up with it. And when they won the state, their first state championship, I mean, we were live on the radio, so that was pretty cool. It's, it's pretty awesome. And your two programs obviously have been very bright spots. You talk about Coach Young, you guys won three state titles. And in, in fact, and probably some of it was natural as the school was getting older, but I feel like when you guys won that first team title, really for all the sports, it's almost like it's gone up another level. I think so, and it, it's it's a tough thing when you look back, and it, it's you know it's funny when you mention seven years, it how quickly I feel like it's gone. Yeah. Um, but when we started off and had you know just freshman and sophomore classes, and uh, you know I can remember uh, you know JV only football that first <laughs> year, and and all our other sports taking their lumps, and you know you you get into year two and three and four, and, and I think to be com as competitive as our you know, full sport group has been uh, in such a short period of time has been nothing short of phenomenal. And I think, you know, that, that goes back to what Coach said, having a great group of coaches, but more importantly, you know, it, it's, it's the kids that have come through our school these first seven years, being able to, uh, to, to coach talented kids, but kids that have really taken pride of being part of what was a brand new school. And, uh, you know, that was something that, you know, I, I, couldn't, I can't tell you the pride I had as a Nolensville resident when, you know, 
back eight, nine, ten years ago when they were talking about well, there's going to be an Owensville High yeah. School. And just what that means to be able to teach and coach and live in, in the community that you, uh, that, that you work for, it's a, it's, it's a great feeling. And I, and I know that, uh, you know, I, I think I speak on behalf of all our coaching staff of how lucky we know we are. Absolutely. Well, it's, there's obviously something really exciting happening out there. It's just obvious when you're out there and when you just take a look at results, honestly. Let's talk a little football here. Coach Derek, 5-0 and record, 2-0 and in region play. And outside of that 21-14 matchup with Giles County, all have been at least a 24-point win. So it's been a dominant start to the season for you guys. Uh, you got to be pleased with the way it started. Absolutely. Our kids have uh, really performed well. Uh, and I think uh, you mentioned being 5-0, and but I think the way we're able to win games in different ways. You know, the first game of the year, being down at halftime against BGA, uh, or be, I'm sorry, being up at halftime and then be able to close that game out. And then, um, you know, the Giles County one was a, was a nail biter and uh, the kids kept fighting and we made some plays when we needed to. Uh, and then last week was really a, a great performance uh, for our entire team in all three phases. It may have been uh, the best game we've played since, since we've been at, at Nolensville. So um, just extremely pl pleased with the kids' attitude and, and how they've shown up every week just wanting to get better. That's, that's our goal every week. And um, that's we're going to continue to preach to our guys and hopefully if they continue to do that, we can continue to, to stay hot here. Great success, obviously, for your team in 4A, a couple semifinal uh, runs, and then you move to 5A, you make it to the second round uh, of the playoffs, beat a, what people thought was a really good station camp team in the first round and, and handily uh, at that. And now you fast forward, <clears throat> you've moved up in class, and you're amongst the best. I mean, I don't know if you would openly say that, but you really are in 5A statewide. Yeah, well, I mean – I like to think so, but um, you know, I think we play in a tough region. Uh, obviously, Paige making the run they had last year. Uh, they're a good football team. Again, this year in Franklin County, you know, they're having a good year. Uh, Columbia last week, I thought, was better than their record showed, and um, we were able to uh, have a good performance then. So, yeah, I, I, you know, making the jump to 5A last year was, was maybe a little bit of a learning curve for us a little bit, um, but this year, I think we kind of settled in, and, and we're, we're playing really well. So, we're gonna hope to, hopefully, we can continue to do that. Well, talk about WCS really doing well in not only your region, but statewide. According to the AP polls, uh, Paige ranked number one. You guys are ranked number five. And I know you're not looking ahead, but I'm telling you, I've circled October <laughs> <Don't> do <it. laughs> the 7th. I have I've circled it. And listen, I think there's a real shot. And again, I know you're not looking ahead, but there's a real shot if things go well, you play again. Yeah, I mean, I think I think, you know, Obviously, Paige is defending region champ, and um, you know they're going to be the champ until someone knocks them off. So uh, we're looking forward to that game, but obviously not not putting uh, the cart before the horse, if you will. We got a, a big game tonight, a non-region game, homecoming, uh, so that'll be exciting. And then you know we got a region game next week against Spring Hill, so definitely can't look past that one. But yes, if 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 we do what we're supposed to do, that should be an exciting game. Coach Young, let's talk a little volleyball. Your three-time. Uh, state champion last year, you move up in class. It didn't matter. You still won the state title. This year, you're 29 and four, five and zero in the league with three games left, uh, three matches there left. Go. Three matches. I left. do it. Plenty three still matches too. left. Uh, it, obviously, a great district and region tournament uh, coming up, and there's going to be two really, really, really good teams in in our district. Not move on to the region. It's uh, it's the toughest district in the state. Not, and, not even and close. I, and I won't back down from that. But, you know, Franklin's really interjected themselves into the talk this year. You know, Brentwood's always been there. Uh, we've been fortunate to be where we are the last few years. And, you know, Ravenwood's a perennial state power. And, and Franklin, uh, you know, who we saw for the first time last week, uh, they've interjected themselves into that conversation of being a top five type team in the state. So, yeah, when you, when you think about <clears throat> pressure – situations uh you know if you want to see a couple pressure matches uh, the semifinals of, of district 11 volleyball uh, here in a couple weeks you got two top eight to ten tight teams in the state that their season's going to end and uh it's it's unfortunate but we all know that's how it is and that's the setup and uh you just want to make sure you're ready to, to to play and and ready to do good things when when that tournament time rolls around for sure. Well, you talk about the league. Uh, you guys five and zero. Oh, Franklin, and, at least at the time of this show, Franklin and Brentwood both four and two. Ravenwood two and four. So take a Ravenwood for example. If they're playing in any other district, they're going to be top ten ranked too because they're not going to have four losses. Correct. I mean, Ravenwood's been 
you know, a phenomenal program for the last, you know, really 15, 20 years. And I mean, we all know what Brentwood's done in volleyball and it's still, you know, mind blowing to me when you talk about the number of, of titles that they were able to win. But uh, that's the biggest difference I feel like from our double A run to what we've done these last two years is there's just no, there's no nights off. Uh, e even when you go to Centennial, Centennial is is in a little bit of a rebuilding mode, but they're still a quality team yeah. with with uh, with a lot of good players, and y you just have to bring it every night, and that's a uh, uh, you know that's tough. That's tough to to be emotionally and mentally ready uh, to play at a really high level night in night out, and so far I'm really proud of our girls for uh, for for doing that, and to know. You know we're we're the hunted, so to speak, in this state right now, and uh, rightfully so. And that's a different mindset from when you're getting to chase a little bit. And, and you know we're just not. I mean, I could do it, but it wouldn't be right. I mean, we can't really play that underdog card uh, anymore. <laughs> we we know where we are. And we know there's a target on our back, and you got to be ready to uh, to defend that. You know, each and every night you go out there. Well, I love the picture I saw on Twitter. You, you know, the banners went up, and you guys sitting in front of it. You have embraced it, like, sure. hey, here it is. Sure. Well, I, I, you don't want them to back back away from expectations, and when you have had the success we've had, I mean, where are your expectations going to be? You know, you don't you you're not going to go backwards. So, you know, we're, we're not afraid to talk about uh, state championships, and we're not afraid to talk about you know, hopefully continuing to to hang those banners. It's a pretty cool <laughs> it's a pretty cool picture to get to take. So, uh, but but you're going to get everybody's best. That's something we talk about. Uh, every every practice and every time before we step on the court that you can't really take what a team has done leading up to our match because when it's time to come play Nolensville, uh, teams are bringing it right now. And that's that's really going to make us uh, stronger and better once this postseason rolls around too. Let's talk about uh, last week what happened. Coach Derek, we'll start with you guys. 44-7 win over Columbia Central, 460 <laughs> yards of offense. Uh, Kobe Walton, another big night, 15 for 20, 250 yards, four touchdowns. And then some of these names keep coming up. Fitzgerald, Northcutt, Tomaska, Samson Johnson. Really, Coach, when I look at your team, I think about really along with Paige, y'all may have the deepest offensive weapons in, in the county. Forget classes. But you guys and Paige, there's so many different names that we keep saying. For a lot of teams, maybe it's three names. For you guys, it's five and six different people every week. Yeah, it's a great luxury to have. Um, and all those guys are back from last year and g gained a lot of experience last year. And, um, you know, Kobe's kind of picked up where he left off um, last year and is doing a great job for us. 14 touchdowns, uh, two interceptions, um, over 1,200 yards passing. And then you mentioned uh, Chance and, and Dylan. Um, and then Samson and, and Zion's really come in and yeah. been able to – been kind of a one-two punch there. And him and Samson have different styles. So that's, that's a great benefit for our offense. But – you know, really what I think uh, our, our offensive staff has done is, is, is found a way to distribute the ball to all these different people. I mean, we really don't have enough footballs for, for all the weapons we got, and sometimes that's tough. But um, I think we've done a good job of trying to, trying to distribute it to different people. And if somebody wants to key in on chance like they've done, then a Dylan Northcutt can step up in the passing game. And, you know, if we can – Samson gets tired, we can put Zion in there, and he can, he, can, he can pound it, and he's got the breakaway speed to take it the distance at any given time. So, um, you know, and I – I got to mention our offensive line, you know, and that, that BGA game when we had to run the football and pound them, they they were able to run the football. Last week we went tempo there late in the game and just got on the ball and ran the same play over and over again, and they were able, able to move the football. So I like where we're at offensively. Um, I, I I still think we can get better, which is kind of a scary thing, um, but um, but what, but what we've done so far has been has been really good. You know what was interesting too? You had Samson as your representative for uh, the media guide. He's he you know he took the picture. I was talking to him that day. And he was excited about it. I think part of it is just him, right? But it had to be part of it a good sales job, too. He was talking about, look, I'm probably going to have less rushing yards, but I'm going to catch the ball a little bit more, mm -hmm. trying to get me out in space. So uh, you guys have done a good job of maybe modifying that. His total rushing yards will probably be less, I'm assuming. He's still scoring a lot of touchdowns, but you've got him – getting the ball in some different ways that maybe you haven't done in the past. Yeah, and people have to account for him in that, that regard as well. And that opens it up for, for Zion when he gets in there. And Zion, when he's, when he's had his opportunities, has been able to make plays for us. So really our mindset going into this year was just how do we get our best people on the field and then how do we get the ball to those people? 
Um, and I think that, our, again, our offensive coordinator, Pat Curran, and, and that entire staff has done a good job every week of coming up with a plan to, to give our kids uh, an opportunity for success. So, again, very extremely pleased with how we're playing offensively, but I do think there is uh, room for us to get better. And as you guys have, have added students in your school, do you have a lot less people playing both sides or at least playing less plays than maybe you had three years ago. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, going to 5A, that's something that, you know, depth kind of becomes an issue. Uh, so we always try to not have guys play both ways if we can, especially on the, the interior interior lines. Uh, but, you know, we probably have three or four that will play both ways. And, um, you know, when I, when I think about guys going both ways, I think of an Eric Harper who starts at free safety. Right. And we've kind of got him in the mix a little more offensively. And, um, uh, Tarek Washington is able to come in. He starts at corner, but he's able to spell Eric on offense if we need to. So just trying to uh, find ways to spell those guys that do go both ways so they don't get worn down as the game goes on. Let's talk a little volleyball, Coach Young. And your week last week was it seems like a this is fiction when you talk about how much stuff you had going on. You get a big five-set win over Franklin. You talked about the improvement of Franklin, 15-11 in the fifth set. Uh, you get your second victory over Brentwood, right? Correct. 17-15 in the fifth set. Then you go to the uh, border battle. You're the champions of that. You beat Cleveland High School, which according to Max Preps, whatever this means, they were ranked number one. You were ranked number two. You beat them in pool play. You beat them again in the championship. You also knock off a pretty good BGA team and a pretty good Maryville team uh, while you're there. That's a full week if I've ever seen one. Well, it's probably silly scheduling on my part, but I think it's great. You know, when when we got done on Thursday at Brentwood, you know, we we'd gone five on Tuesday with Franklin, uh, you know, couple hour match, which in volleyball, you know, it's just not what you normally do, and turned around and played about a two hour and fifteen minute marathon with Brentwood, and knowing that twenty four hours later you're going to be playing you know, in, a, in a, one of the most loaded tournaments that we've been in all year, and we've been in two other really good out-of-town tournaments, you know, for a split second, you're almost like, do we do we need to go to this? Is this is this even something that, that makes a lot of sense for us? But, you know, like I said, kids are resilient, and, and I know we were tired this weekend, but we didn't play like it, and uh, was super proud of how we stepped up. Cleveland uh, got us in the Knoxville tournament early this year, uh, about a month ago, and uh, – beat us in the finals of a really good, uh, uh, I think it was Battle of the Sun Spheres, what they call it, 64 teams from Tennessee and the Carolinas and Georgia. And uh, we were able to, you know, play really well and make it all the way to the finals. And Cleveland's got such a good team. You know, they beat us last year in that first round of that state tournament right. where we had to make our way through the loser's bracket. And, you know, it's a team that we're, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away from, but we've developed a, a, a really a good rivalry with these last couple of years. And, uh, to be able to see them again on Saturday and then to play as well as we did was was, a, was nice to see us come back and uh, you know just give us confidence that if we if we do see them again in uh, in October that uh, you know we'll have the confidence to step up and and play well. So it was a really really busy week and, and has led into this week being almost a, an odd feeling. You know we haven't played a match yet. Uh, you know uh, we'll have we'll have the one with with Ravenwood and. Uh, it's been nice to have a little bit of a break, though, to give the girls a couple of days off and, and uh, really get ready for the stretch run. So you come back Sunday, Monday, you chill out those mm -hmm. days, jump back in on Tuesday. Fairly light, though, right? Yeah, we, we really, on Tuesday this week, uh, we didn't practice. Uh, we, we had a light practice Monday, uh, did a, a recovery session. You, uh, kind of fun to see girls get in the cold tub because <laughs> uh, some of them did great with it and some of them it took a while for them to buy into the idea. But... Uh, just had a little recovery and stretching uh, session on Tuesday and, uh, you know, stayed off the court and, and, and again, got back to it Wednesday. And uh, so just nice to, to have, a, even though we, we, we were still around and, and, and got some reps in, uh, it was good to have some time off because, like I said, last week was so busy uh, that I think we really needed it both physically and, and probably mentally too. Let's talk a little personnel. We'll start with football. Uh, Coach, we've talked about your offensive weapons, but I, I went and looked. Uh, the defense has given up 56 points this year. That's 11 per game. You have to be pleased with the way you've played defensively. Absolutely. Um, you know, defense wins championships. And, you know, I'm, as a defensive guy, I, I take a lot of pride in, in the way we play defense at Nolensville. And we've had some good defenses uh, since we've been there. And, you know, this group right here, if they if they continue to, to progress the way I think they can, it's got, got a chance to be one of the better bunches we've had. Um, you talk about, I think we're giving up 180 yards a game. Uh, we've played 
in the first five games, um, every team has been 70% run, so we always preach stopping the run. I think we're giving up uh, right around 120 yards rushing a game, um, haven't allowed a passing touchdown, um, but I think that has to do with the, the, the opponents that we've had. Um, and then last week, um, playing Columbia, they're a wing T team, and anybody that knows wing T, you got to play discipline, you got to do your job, you can't try to do too much, and that's what we preached all week. And and uh, the kids played great team defense, and you know, minus a 77 yard run there late in the fourth quarter, we held them to 66 yards of offense. Um, so I think that's something we can build off of going forward. Just um, preaching, you know, do your job, and if you do your 111th, then everything's going to work out fine. But our kids play extremely hard, and you know. And honestly, we haven't had to get too exotic. We've played base defense for the most part. And, you know, that's hats off to our kids. If you can play base defense and, and, and have the success we've had on defense, that's, that's a testament to them. You know, it's interesting, too. It seems like this always happens in football. Regardless of how you play offensively or defensively, every coach will end up saying in some form or fashion, it's about the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, especially as you get deep in the playoffs. Yep, absolutely. Um, when you get deep in the playoffs, you got to be able to run the football, got to be able to stop the run. Uh, I think last year that was that was an issue for us on offense. We struggled uh, st stopping the run, but you talk about uh, our defensive line, um, Stafford Bussey, our nose tackle, stepped up this year and has done a great job. That's not a very glorious position, but it's a key component to, to what we do on defense since we are an odd front. Uh, and then our defensive ends, Trey Woods and, and Taylor Wine, have done awesome. Um, Taylor Wine has been been a monster and really given defenses some problems. And then uh, our two outside backers, we really have three that have played, but Jackson Bandy's our, our bandit, our field outside backer. He's, he's done a great job. And then we've rotated two guys there at the, the boundary outside backer and uh, Joe Carano and, um, excuse me, uh, Tyler Rhodes. Uh, and then our two inside guys are back, Nick Rosmondo, Jaden Wyatt, and then our secondary, Derek Burrows, Tarek Washington, Eric Harper, and Nico Amato is our strong safety, who's basically the quarterback of our defense. So got a lot of those guys back from last year. A couple of them that um, didn't see much action last year have really stepped up, and, and they've, they've really just kind of started to gel together these last few weeks. So, again, I'm excited about th that group. I'm excited about what we've been able to do thus far. But, again, just like offensively, I, I still think we can get better, and that's what we're going to keep preaching and try to be playing our best football these last five games of the regular season. Let's talk a little volleyball, Coach Young. Your team has some star power. You know, you mentioned folks like Peyton Neal and Kyra Knox. And then you've got the – I was looking at this. You've got the reigning Wilco Award winner, Maggie Rickard, and she may have a hard time beating out a teammate <laughs> for that award this year. I mean, you've got some – I know you've got others too, but uh, certainly those are some names we keep seeing. When you look at your stats each week and the way you're playing, those are names that come up. Sure. Maggie is uh, – you know, she was our all-time kills leader, you know, before she even played, you know, one match – this this our senior year and she's been lights out for us again. Kyra, you know, I knew Kyra was going to be good the the you know first time I saw her, uh, you know, really as an eighth grader even. And uh, what she was able to do last year as a freshman and uh, has just really blossomed into a six rotation player this year. Uh, she's been phenomenal for us, such a weapon on the right side and and, and the things she's able to do. Uh, you know, Peyton Neal has stepped into the libero uh, jersey this year. Uh, she's a Marshall sh uh, commit. Uh, just, I mean, my gosh, she works so hard every day. She is diving all over the floor, you know, knocking people down almost to do her job and, uh, and does such a good job of making sure the rest of them do their job too. Um, you know, I know Coach talked about it a little bit. You got to have on field or on court leaders. If everything leadership wise is only coming from your coaches, you're not going to get the success you want to have. And uh, Peyton's done a great job this year of, of taking charge of that back row. Uh, you know, Maggie, along with Ellie Tant, they're our floor captains. They've uh, they've been phenomenal. And, and I'm really blessed with with all our seniors. We have nine seniors this year that have been with our program and have gone through. Uh, you know, the battles that we've gone through these last three years and to, to see them uh, stepping into that senior spotlight, so to speak, and, and continuing to lead us, you know, it's been really, really special for sure. Um, uh, Caroline Johnston and Elliot, our setting position, they've been great. Uh, you know, and we've got some younger kids that have stepped up and, uh, and done a good job too. And I want to mention Madeline McNeely. She's been a, a starter in the middle for us the last two years. She's a senior as well. Um, and a shout out to Katie Hammonds, Hannah Berg, and McKaylee Peters Act. They're three defensive specialists that do some serving work. Uh, some of that, 
you know, not a lot of glory in, in some of the roles they fill, but but huge parts of our team. And then you you look at Maggie Allred in the middle, who you know she led the state in blocks as a sophomore and continues to just get better and better. Um, Marley Holden as a DS as a junior has been great. Bella Martin uh, on the outside uh, has been really solid. And Paisley Layton is the final of our seniors who, whether she's playing on the right side or playing on the outside, great teammate, uh, gives a lot to our team, and just so happy for for really all those kids to be able to to continue what we've been able to build, uh, you know, these first several years for sure. Let's get some final thoughts here. Again, we're talking all Nolensville today, the WCTV football game of the week, Nolensville Rockville. Coach Derek, what are some keys for you tonight, offensively and defensively? Well, I think uh, first off for both teams, you know, Rockville coming off a big region win against Riverdale, um, and then us coming off a big win against Columbia. So. You know, I think who who came back this week ready to work, and who came back this week kind of you know not really not really feeling themselves too much and, and ready to get back to work. And uh, you know, Rockville's four and one. Uh, they're playing really well. Uh, they're chaotic on defense. A lot of different multiple fronts, multiple coverages. Uh, good athletes. So we gotta gotta be ready for a lot of different um, things they can do defensively. So I think execution, um, as always, is going to be a, a huge part of the game for us on offense. And then defensively, um, Rockville does a great job of of putting players in conflict quite a bit with RPOs and some options type stuff. So again, like I said, last week playing discipline, just try, try not to do too much, just trying to do your 111th every snap um, and um, not giving up any big plays. Uh, and then the kicking game is going to be huge for us too. Last week we uh, opened the game, on a, we looped the kickoff and they muffed it, we recovered it and kind of got us off to a fast start. So uh, all three phases, like any game, is going to be very important. Uh, but I think um, th those are the things that that are going to be key. And then also it's homecoming, so a lot of distractions all week. Uh, hopefully we've handled those distractions well. Uh, today's a long day for our kids with the parade and you know, powder puff and all that stuff. So I, I told them all week I want them to enjoy those things, but there's, there's, there's one thing that's for the players, and that's the game on Friday night. Well, uh, I know that can be quite a distraction, but it's an important thing that, 100%. that, that, they, that they're a part of too. Uh, Coach Young, and I'm going to ask Coach Derek the same question. Uh, safe to say that state championships the ultimate goal for your team and a realistic one. I think so. I think when when you've had the success that we've had and you've been able to do what we've done these last three years uh, in our sport in a high school setting, you know, getting to the state finals and then obviously winning that last match or game of the year is, is what you, you know, do everything for. And I think it's a – it's a goal that we obviously have and we're not going to back away from or change this year. And I know Coach Derek has the same thoughts uh, for his group. So, you know, you, you don't ever want to put so much pressure on yourself or your team where it's a, you know, it's a state title or it's a failure type situation. Yeah. But I think we'd be shorting ourselves if we don't make it known that, hey, that we're, we're good enough to do this. We've done it before. This is where we want to see our season end and, and then just go from there. Same thing, Coach Derek? Yeah, I think, you know, going in 4A, going to back-to-back -back state semifinals, you kind of create some expectations for yourself. Uh, and last year, obviously, didn't live up to those expectations. So those expectations have not changed. Uh, just like Coach Young, you know, we, we, we want to be a contender. We want to be, um, you know, have an opportunity to play for a state championship. Um, so those are those are always our goals. And our kids understand that um, that may be the end goal, but it's a it's a week-by-week -week deal. And you, you got to take it week-by-week -week and game-by-game -game and, and how you prepare matters. Uh, and how you approach each game matters. So, yeah, I think, um, again, creating some expectations is a good thing. Uh, but at the same time, like Coach mentioned, you don't want to make it where, you, where your, your team feels pressure or your, your coaches feel pressure. You, it's still a game. You still want to have fun. Um, but I think that just shows um, for both of our programs, really, when you, when you create those expectations, I think you're on the right track. And Coach Derek, uh, uh, rumor has it that in the next couple of weeks, game day, Maybe heading to Nolensville High School for a for a matchup that's coming up. I don't think people can appreciate this enough. The atmosphere at your games and that band has a lot to do with it. Hundred percent. It's incredible. Yeah, and again, that, the band and the cheerleaders, the dance team. I mean, the whole community coming out. Um, you know, I think um, the band definitely sets the tone with uh, with the atmosphere that they create. And um, I joke all the time and tell people we're we're not a football school, we're not a volleyball school, we're a band school. That's right. Um, you know, you got kids from other uh, uh, from the other side of the stand, it's the visiting team running over to our side to watch them perform. So you know, uh, Benjamin Easley does a great job um, getting getting that atmosphere 
uh, started for us. But again, this, this going back to the support of the community and then um, the administration and everybody wanting to put on a, a good product um, on the field uh, to create that atmosphere, and that just makes more people want to be a part of it. Well, it goes back to what you were talking about, Coach Young, that community feel. Sure. You can feel that at those events. I think so. I mean, when I was in high school, and this is not a slap at a band, but, you know, halftime is when you went to the bathroom and go to the concession <laughs> stand and to see our students and the way they yeah. interact uh, during our band's performances at his games, it's phenomenal. And just in general, the whole community, the whole – the, just the vibe of Nolansville is something special about it. And uh, like I said, I know I'm lucky to, to, be, to be in the spot that I'm in, and it's great to, uh, to, to coach and teach and, and live in, in, in such a good community that's so supportive to all of us. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you being here today. I know you're busy. We're excited for you. We're proud of you. And, again, thank you for being here. Appreciate it, Thank Darren. you. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.